Part two of my conversation with Pac-12 insider John Wilner. He'll go into here how the Pac-12 actually did the Big 12 a solid in conference realignment. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing right now. I talk college football every day on this channel. Right now, that means conference realignment every day on this channel. I try to give the Big 12 a voice. All right, you may have heard part one of my conversation with John Wilner. We went into the likelihood of USC and Oregon getting wandering eyes and going to the Big Ten. He does not find that extremely likely. Another part of this that he gave perspective on is, one, what happens to the Big 12 without Texas and Oklahoma, and could there be impacts of that that we're not even talking about right now? And also, as I mentioned, hey, the Pac-12 may have done the Big 12 a solid in realignment. Without further ado, here is part two of that conversation. I'm sure you saw Mac Engel from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram had reported that TCU and Houston were close to getting a Pac-12 invite and might still down the road. And when I quizzed him on, hey, like why would they not do it now if they're going to do it later? He said, look, Kliakov is a is a new commissioner. He needs time to work with the presidents and try to convince them there. I, you, do you put any level of stock in, into that report and them still thinking at some point they might expand and, and get into the state of Texas? Well, I think that it's possible that they will decide – you know, 18, 24 months that they do need to expand, and t- TCU and Houston would probably be at the top of the list. But I think that the, the report that they were very close to making an offer to those schools, I think that's wrong, dead wrong. Um, I had zero indication that the Pac-12 was close to, to offering uh, membership to anybody. And Texas Tech, they would be behind, you think, Houston and TCU on that list? I don't I don't know what value Texas Tech is going to bring, to be honest. I mean, Houston and TCU bring bigger markets and recruiting access, right? I don't know what Texas Tech brings. And I'm, you know, to be honest, I want to see what happens to the Big 12. Everybody evaluates the Big 12 going forward without Texas and Oklahoma based on what the Big 12 has been with Texas and Oklahoma. But you take those two out of it, and the dynamics are completely different. The dynamics for ticket sales, dynamics for recruiting, dynamics for for, uh, media value, everything is different without those those two schools. And so I don't think you could say, well, because the other eight have done this to this point means the other eight are going to do the same thing moving forward. Uh, I think it's a whole different dynamic once those two schools leave. Well, that's a fair point, and it'll all be honestly pretty fascinating to see how all of this plays out with the, the Pac-12 TV deal and what's going on in, in the Big 12 as well, for sure. John, uh, really yeah, appreciate I mean, it's good that they – it's great that they're adding those schools. I mean, it's better for college football uh, and college athletics in general if the Big 12 is stable and, and, you know, up to however many schools it's going to be up to. Yeah, you know, I'll throw in here another question. This is a report that I saw actually from the it was the Baylor guys at Sikkim 365 who have reported some things throughout this. But uh, they had said the the Big 12 and the Pac-12 had some sort of pact, so to speak, uh, maybe a gentleman's agreement, if you will, a la the alliance, right, that they were not going to, to raid each other or take any schools from, from either side there. Have you heard anything to, to that end? Uh, no, not that specific, but I know that one point that got lost with the Alliance, you know, I don't know if you watched the, the Alliance, that video news conference with the three commissioners, there was a lot of questions that they couldn't answer, right? Because they don't have a contract and they don't have contracts probably because they moved quickly. The reason they moved quickly is they wanted to provide stability for the Big 12. They wanted the Pac-12, the, the Pac-12 wanted the Big 12 to know we're not expanding as soon as possible. So the Big 12 could get on with its business of adding schools without worrying that the, the Pac-12 might raid it. I mean, that was a, that was an important piece for the Pac-12 was to try to try to help out the Big 12 with, with some clarity of what was going to happen. Yeah, and that, that was reflected, to, to your point, that was reflected in some of the comments there by the, the commissioners as well during that press conference. Yep. So, yeah. All right. Well, John, uh, greatly appreciate you taking some time and, and lending your insight into what's going on in the Pac-12. Uh, very much appreciate it, and uh, best of luck covering the rest of the college football season. Thanks for having me.